Okay, cool. Um, so, uh, this is, uh, mine is Don, and this is Emily, and Emily is a rock star, and she has been working all throughout COVID and for the, in the business for the last couple of years as one of our booking agents that is um, organizing, you know, executive accommodation for um, premium and luxury guests that could fall into uh, corporate relocations or luxury holidays or what have you. Anyway, Emily has discovered something that is amazing and has actually probably in, in a lot of ways transformed our business, which is extensions. So Emily, tell us a little bit about extensions and why, tell us what you've noticed in the last 12 months as it relates to people booking short-term accommodation. So people booking short-term accommodation in the last 12 months are always people in transition. So they're people who think they know what they want, but they don't. So that often results in um, them requiring property for longer than what they first expected. Right. Um, so because of that, we've seen our extension rates, which just to define extension, that's someone booking a property and then extending that booking longer. Um, that has doubled in the last 12 months. And that is because the nature of our bookings has changed and the clientele has also changed. So um, it is very much resident. Right. So what is, the, for a short-term rental, mm -hmm. the average, what, 12 months ago, what was the average length of a short-term rental booking? It was about between 14 and 30 nights. Right. Yeah. And what is it now? It's about 60 nights, so nearly double. Yeah. Yeah. So the basket value is higher yeah. and the length of stay is higher. And what does that mean for the owner? It means, for the owner, it means a lot of things, but the basic thing is it means that you're kind of switching from having someone visiting your property to someone living there. So it means your property is being better mm. looked after. Yeah. It means um, someone settling into your property. Mm -hmm. um, they're therefore more likely to extend. They're local. Th they're local. Uh, and it ends up being a bigger value booking in the long run. Um, sometimes it takes us a little while to explain this to our owners because the model has changed. But um, when you have that perspective, we find that owners much more sway towards these extended stays then. And if anything, they've kind of been spoiled in the last 12 months with these extended stay bookings. Right. But I don't think that that's going to change. I think this is a, a segment of the market that we've kind of honed in on. Yeah. The, um, let me, so I asked you before, what's in it for the owner? And I was kind of going to vacancy and occupancy. So what we've, we've seen a lower nightly or weekly rate, yes. which is still higher than long-term leasing, significantly higher. Um, but because it's longer, what's been the financial impact? Yeah, so obviously we, you often take some sort of compromise on the rental figure at the beginning. Um, in order to reward these clients for their longer commitment. However, we've seen vacancy rates drop significantly yeah. because of that. So, so staying longer. People are having, people stay in their property much more regularly than what they would have in the past. Right. And if we ran the figures for the whole year, I think that they wouldn't actually be compromising from a well, financial we, perspective. Well, we actually took less bookings as a business. We took less. We took less bookings, but there was more rent that moved through the. Yeah. So yeah. Rental, which a, basically means that the owners benefited because that means that there's more rent that moved through their properties, right? So. I think the overall theme of this extension case is is quality over quantity. Right. Exactly. And and um, so, what percentage of the time would you say if someone's booking for three or four weeks, what percentage of the time? Do you think, uh, you know, sorry, because yes. I know you've done the math. Yeah. So, so what, what, what percentage of the time do they extend? So if you're booking to begin with for anything pretty much more than 21 nights, yep. you're 75% likely to yeah. extend. So, so let's just repeat that. 75% of the time when someone's booking a property for three weeks or more, they're extending. And, and what does that mean financially in terms of the rate? Um, well, not we don't always drop the rate. Really. Exactly. If anything... <laughs> Um, the most common situation is that the rate will be maintained um, for their extension. Obviously, if we are moving into a different season of the year, then 50% uh, of clients are, are happy to pay an increased rate to remain in the property. Right. So 
you can't really put a value on convenience. Like people are happy to pay if it yeah. means they're not going to move their three kids around again. Sure. So so so, so what's happening is the the rate for th for three weeks is X, and if you if you extend for another X, your rate is not X minus Y, it's actually X plus X, which means that you the owners are benefiting. The owners are our partner. Owner partners are, are are financially benefiting because the rate is being maintained as higher, although it is lower than doing you know, a, a two night stay or a week night, weekly stay, which we don't do anyway. It's still significantly higher. Yeah, and I, I think, think what's important though is that when we've come into school holidays, right, and all of a sudden somebody somebody goes to extend, what's the answer? You can extend at the higher rate. Exactly right. Yeah. So where there is where there where there is where there is risk, there must be reward, and where there, where we're providing flexibility, um, you the owners and oh, so not owners but guests or the people who are, are occupy these prop properties need to understand that where there's flexibility, there may need to be investment. Yeah. Yeah, I think. So if you had a two bedroom or a three bedroom property in Mossman, Lower North Shore, Manly, or you know, in the lower North Shore, Manly, the lower Northern Beaches, yep. and you were, and it was your, your your investment property. What would you be doing if it was your money? Well, if I had decided I'd furnish my property and I'm interested in these executive stays and however they come, I know being in the business that the extended stay market is where you want to be. Sometimes it takes a little while to get there, but if I know that I'm not compromising on a, still a short-term stay mentality and rate in order to get to that extended stay space, then that's where I'd want to be. Like. So what are the, yeah, cool. And so what do you think the other implications are of going to neighbors and strata and stuff with extended stay? Because there's a lot of the buildings out there are going, oh, we're gonna we put in bylaws and blah, 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 to stop, you know, to, for minimum stays of three months and stuff. What are you experiencing as it relates to executive, or those extended stays? See, we tend to see people starting to get to know their neighbors after about a month of yeah. living in a property. And as I said before, it's because they're living day to day. They're seeing the ins and outs of the building or the right. area. They're, they're living. Not, they're not visiting. They're not, I mean, nine out of 10 times at the moment, they're locals. And we know that locals like other locals. Um, so I think neighbor relations are improved. Um, people get to know other pe people on the strata committee. Yeah. Um, and it's just all in all a more settled kind of model versus the high turnaround kind of model. It also, although we are equipped for it anyway, from an operational perspective, it, is, it puts a lot less pressure on us to keep people in properties. Um, we still get into the properties as much as we need. We still do our routines. But what we um, have noticed is that we do, sorry, I'm gonna jump in here. You know, that's, that's what we have noticed is that same date doing a same day change over, it becomes a lot harder because of the housekeeping, like people have been living in the property, so they haven't been just visiting for a couple of weeks. So we now we do need a little bit of time. Yeah. You know, we've noticed, yeah. Yeah, after someone's been around for three months, we need more than a 24 hours to, to clean and assess the property. Um, but we are finding the properties are being well looked after. Cool. So, um, thank you. You made, you made a massive difference and uh, um, you know, I think that you're probably one of the most educated people in Sydney as it relates to going on this extended stay space right now. Um, Emily's done an amazing job, uh, and the, the reality of the situation is, is if your property is of high standard and you've got a good manager running it, and I'm not chest pounding, but and it's got good furnishings and fittings and it's taken care of, the probability of someone extending and the owner benefiting is a lot higher. Then yeah. if they're rocking up and it's IKEA furniture, it's very rare can... we have landlords turn it back an extension ever. It's... No, but I mean like if the customer, if the tenant or the guest is happy, the prop, the and because the property is high quality, the probability of them extending Always and staying is higher. So yeah. anyway, thank you, Emily. Thank I think you. you're star, and um, we'll talk soon. Bye. Bye.